you today is what lights you up? I'm guessing some of you can just rattle off a list of things that make you happy and brings you excitement. And I bet some of you would have to sit and think about that for a while. Take a look at what you do when you have free time. Is that what really makes you happy? Does it fulfill you? I came across a poem by Rumi, and to this day, it sits on the top of my vision board. I read it in one of my favorite books ever called The Buddha and the Badass by Vision Lakhiani, and it reads, When I run after what I think I want, my days are a furnace of distress and anxiety. If I sit in my own place of patience, what I need flows to me and without any pain. From this I understand that what I want also wants me, is looking for me and attracting me. There's a great secret in this for anyone who can grasp it. How many of you can relate to that? How many of you can keep pushing towards something that you think you want only to find out that you're completely stressed and feel like you just can't get ahead? Boss, what happened? The pen is blue. The pen is blue! I found that one of the secrets in this poem is the significance of finding out who you really are so you can determine what your heart truly desires. It's not about what you think you should be doing or what you've been conditioned to do, rather than thinking about what you really want to do. Once you find out what that desire is and place your focus there, you will notice that you're no longer pushing against things, but rather being drawn to your desires, like a magnet. You will notice that these things will come easy to you, and it's not a struggle. You'll meet the right people that will help you along your journey, and it will happen so naturally. The right events and situations seem to come before you with little to no effort. Now these aspirations can be related to your career or hobbies, but you need to identify the things in your life that light you up. If you don't have them, then you could find them. If you know what lights you up and you feel that you want more of that in your life, that can certainly be done too. Let's say you don't know where, um, what you're most passionate about during this stage of your life. First, write down a list of things that make you happy. They can be little things like dancing to your favorite music, playing the guitar, riding your bike, being around people who make you laugh, or teaching others. Just make a list of all the things that bring a smile to your face and that make you happy. I suggest doing this when you have time to reflect. You may want to think about it while going for a walk or listening to music, but make sure you write it down. There's a magic to writing things down. I've heard it referred to as a brain dump. Once you write it on paper, it frees space in your head and helps you declutter all of those thoughts in your mind. 1.21 gigawatts! 1.21 gigawatts! Next, write down a list of values that are really important to you. I would then categorize them into your core values. Next, find a way to incorporate those core values into your life. If you're not feeling fulfilled or happy, it could be because your actions are not in line with your values or because your deepest values aren't currently present in your day-to-day -day life. That's why it's so important to identify the beliefs that you regard the most. If you're still having a hard time coming up with things, then you may want to pick, a, pick up a book so you can listen to someone else's story and gain some insight from them regarding purpose or fulfillment. Oftentimes hearing stories will trigger thoughts of your own and evoke a flow of new ideas. That he gave Happy a kiss on his wet little puppy nose. The end. The part of the story I don't like is that the little boy gave up looking for Happy after an hour. He didn't put posters up or anything. He just sat on the porch like a goon and waited. This may take some time to do, but it's worth it. You can add to your list as you think of more things that light you up. When you keep focused on the things that you want, your brain will take care of the rest and will leave you there. The reticular activating system is a part of your brain that controls what we perceive in our consciousness. If you focus on the negative, you'll get more negative. If you focus on what you want, you'll draw in those desires. That's why making a vision board is so powerful. That sounds big. It's been on my vision board for years. Every time you look at that board, your brain is taking in what you do want and will highlight all the opportunities that will get you there. If you don't focus on what you want, those opportunities will pass you right by as you won't even recognize them or see them. 
we all deserve to be happy and fulfilled. Our lives will be so much more enriched when we spend more time doing the things that we love. We just need to know the what and why of our desires and how we'll present itself. When you notice that you're being drawn to certain things with ease, it's because you truly love doing it and it's not work. You will find more and more ways to incorporate that into your life, where you choose to focus. I'd love to hear your biggest passions and your core values. I've done this exercise and I discovered that love, faith, connection, and growth are my core values. I've noticed that I find a way to incorporate all of these in my daily life and have done so without even thinking about it after being on the vision project. The power of our minds is truly fascinating. A vision board is the best and easiest way to keep your desires top of mind and with very little effort. If you wanna learn more about how to create a vision board, just click on the screen and watch the steps on how to create a vision project board of your very own. Thanks so much for watching and as per usual, go forth and be awesome.